Dams are often called the most reliable and eco-friendly source of energy. But is it really any of those two things? Dams, especially ones made to protect against floods, are one of the riskiest structures you can ask an engineer to build. Acres of land, small village communities, billions of dollars, and local wildlife, there's a lot at stake. Other than the fact that dams, like every other concrete structure, ages over time. But sometimes, dams can be destroyed as a result of natural forces, like heavy rains caused by a typhoon. Well, sometimes it's the very land a dam stands on. If the rocky foundation is not stiff enough to bear the pressure or too porous, a high flow rate can undercut the whole dam structure. No pun intended. So, without further ado, here are some of the worst dam fails in history. St. Francis Dam, LA. Even the most dams are often built to last centuries, like the Kofini Dam in Greece, built in 1260 BC, that's still in use today. Others are not so lucky. The St. Francis Dam in LA was one of them. Designed by the city's chief engineer and the mastermind behind the 100-mile-long river aqueduct in LA, you must be wondering, with all those bright minds on board, what could possibly have gone wrong? Not looking into lab suitability was one, while changing the height of the dam twice during construction, adding 10 feet each time, without making the base any wider, was another. On the day of the collapse, a vigorous leak of 2 to 3 cubic feet per second was found near the base. And before the engineers could work their magic, the dam collapsed in just hours. Only two years after it opened, it unleashed a flood wave 140 feet high. With more than 430 people dying and a sweeping blackout in most of Los Angeles, with final losses from the incident coming up at $7 million, making it one of the most expensive dam failures in history. The Vermont Dam, Northern Italy At the time it was built in 1959, this dam in the Italian Alps was one of the largest in the world. It's not in use anymore but it still stands tall as one of the tallest dam walls at 262 meters high. And when this one failed, it wasn't a design flaw, more like a massive landslide. You see, the dam was built right next to Mont Toc, which by the way, is also called the Waking Mountain, thanks to the high number of landslides. Wondering how much land exactly slid from the mountain to the dam? 92,000 cubic of rock to be exact that came plunging into the man-made lake, enough to spill massive amounts of water over the top of the dam. In fact, the force of the spill was so powerful, it created a wall of air that tore up the clothes of victims. 2,000 people died in the tragic incident, leaving behind another chilling reminder of the destructive side of nature. Ban Chao Dam, Hunan Province, China 1975. Let's be honest, without dams, it's impossible for countries to fully cash in on the potential of their rivers. In our modern times, dams are essential for irrigating farms, making electricity, and preventing devastating floods. And when it comes to building dams, China leads the world with more dams than all other countries combined. But because the Chinese have built so many of them over the years, the number of accidents has also been much higher than any other country. Take, for example, the ironic fate of China's so-called Iron Dam. Built with a clay core surrounded by a sand shell, the 80-foot structure was simply not built to withstand what was literally the heaviest rainfall in the region's history. You see, the Banqiao Dam was built on a flooding probability of one in a thousand years. And to be fair to the developers, there's no way they could have seen this one coming. The Typhoon Nina released 18 inches of rainfall over the region. That's more than 40% of all the rain the entire region witnessed in a whole year. As the embankment began to fall apart, a flood wave of 500,000 acre-feet of water was now moving at 30 miles per hour, 44 feet per second, ripping through the farms and villages located downstream with one worker famously crying out, the river dragon has come. A peak flow rate this high resulted in a flood that was seven miles wide and covered three million acres. That's about roughly the size of the state of Connecticut. No wonder the Banchow Dam failure is still described as one of the worst flooding disasters in history. 
with true extent of the losses still unknown. Mind you, the Banqiao Dam in China was only one among many dams that were destroyed after the extreme rains of Typhoon Nina. In Banqiao alone, up to 90,000 to 230,000 lives were lost with exact figures never making it to the public thanks to China's strict media control. China is unmatched as the world's hydro hegemon, with more dams in service than every other country combined. To learn more about the biggest water transfer project in China, feel free to check out this video on our channel. The Brumadino Dam, Brazil, 2019 While most dams are designed to store water for crops or people, this dam was different. It was actually built to contain toxic spill from the nearby mines of iron. In simple words, it was basically full of poisonous mud. I mean, we are talking millions of tons of noxious sludge. In January 2019, when the dam failed, it released a massive torrent of toxic waste that engulfed nearby farms and villages. 200 miners were buried alive, while toxic mud traveled over 5 kilometers from the dam into the nearby river, while destroying this quaint village of Corrego de Feijao on its way. And as if the toxic mud wasn't bad enough, the local alarm system had to fail on that same day. I mean, that's just bad damn luck. Especially for the company operating the mine, who had to pay over $7 billion in damages. That's a lot of money. But then again, this was probably the worst industrial accident Brazil has ever seen. Teton Dam, Idaho, U.S., 1976 when it comes to unlucky dams, the Teton Dam in eastern Idaho is top of the list. Built as a 300 feet high earthen dam that took three years to build, it is the highest dam in the world which completely failed. Not to mention, the first of all the dams made by the Bureau of U.S. Reclamation to collapse. After a vicious cycle of droughts and flooding, the government proposed the idea of this dam in 1963 as a way to regulate water levels in the area. On June 3, 1976, only a few months after completion, workers found a series of small holes causing leakage. Sadly, it was too late by that time. Bulldozers were called in to replace the washed out material, but it was soon clear that the leak was much bigger than they could repair. As the dam flooded, a 15-foot high wall of water came rushing through the town of Wilford, Sugar City, and Rexburg. 11 people were killed, while 15,000 heads of livestock drowned. In hindsight, multiple factors were at play, from the porous nature of the rock and poor construction techniques to lack of oversight were identified to become the key reasons for the collapse, casting a bad light on the Bureau reputation for years to come. So, there you have it, some of the craziest dam fails in history. And by now, you can probably see why, under international law, dams are seen as sites containing dangerous forces. Whether it's water overtopping a dam and eroding it away as it gathers force coming down, or a case of seepage that might destroy dams gradually and then suddenly through forces of erosion. In the same way, dams can also fail if the soil is unable to drain, with static liquefaction causing construction materials to lose their strength. Trust me, a lot can go wrong here which is why there is so much that you have to get right. Remember, dams are massive concrete structures, but if they are not propped up by the right foundations and construction techniques, it can result in major losses for humanity and the natural environment. To learn more about fascinating structures over and underwater, make sure to hit subscribe so you never miss out.